Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, traders from across the globe. One of the things that I think we need to know is what will happen before it happens, right? Very, very important to know that. Wonderful if you can come up with a system that tells you what did happen. We all know about that stuff. We need to know what will happen before it happens to make proper trading decisions. So I have literally been pointing out to traders since the 1980s that news always comes out in the charts first, no matter what's going on in the world. If you can read the chart well, the news will come out first, then, well, excuse me, you'll see it in the chart first, then the news will come out after the formation is formed. In fact, what I'm going to call today's session is news always comes out in the charts first. Follow me on this. I have a feeling that you will see that that's absolutely true. Now, many of my community who follows me all over the internet, my live trading room, you name it, they've asked me to cover a lot of markets in today's webinar. So I promise to cover them for you as well. And let's see what we're looking at. We are looking at an e-mini S&P daily bar chart. It's the whole entire chart. I'm just blowing it up a little bit so I can show you what's happened recently. So the e-mini S&P rallying inside of this channel, right? Simple channel, simple geometry, riding up and down the channel, runs up and puts in the all-time forever high on Jan 1st, excuse me, on April 1st. The all-time ever high is put in at 53, 33 and a half e-mini S&P. That night, my Omni tells me that something is amiss and we're going to start to head down. And I literally put out a video the very next day, April 2nd, I filmed the video and told traders. In fact, let me just show you. It should be quick and easy. I told traders this. Let me see if you can hear any of this. The algorithms, let's talk about more. The landscape, number one on the board. The my new how book, that? Keyboard <laughs> Roots, How Anyone Can Earn Six Sorry, Figures kid. From Home with that a Simple Bookie. The landscape is quickly shifting to a to more bearish conditions in our e and the S&P, NASDAQ, Russell, Dow, Transportation Average, the whole gamut. I filmed this video on 4-2, put it out on the night of 4-2 for trading 4-3. Once again, if you look at where we were, the highest high ever put in was put in on 4 on April 1st. On April 2nd, we identified that something was wrong. This is what's happened since that video came out. We not only were we going in this green channel working our way up, but look what's happened since now. We've created channels working their way down. And it looks like we will continue down for a while. Now, get this. The other thing that was happening is we were riding along this average beautifully riding along the average riding along the average riding along the average well you broke the average now we know wall street loves the 50 ball moving average right i've shown you this in many videos and wall street loves this average well we're below that one too not good but isn't it amazing how we were able to identify it the day it took place and put out the video, and I will admit, us Omniacs made a fortune on the way down. We caught a lot of these trades on the way down, but you have to know when this is coming before it happens. So that's your E-mini S&P, and it looks like there's more downside coming for us next week. Let me show you another chart, NASDAQ. The NASDAQ broke the channel right around the same time the S&P breached the channel, and is now literally in a different channel. We're now forming a channel moving lower. Now, I kid you not, there's so much of market movement that is involved that Wall Street watches called geometry. You will see by the end of this presentation that Wall Street watches geometry. How would I know that? Well, at 18 years old, I started on Wall Street and spent my entire life there working on the exchanges, using point and figure charts, bringing those charts onto computers, turning them into daily bar charts, getting that widespread across the exchanges, helping the exchanges then get analysis on computers and onto the internet. I have been here for the whole damn gamut, kids. I really get this stuff. I started with point and figure, with pencil and paper, watching the markets on the trading floor as a young kid being trained and we have developed everything that you see over the years. I have been a huge part of helping Wall Street literally get the charts off paper, 
onto the computers, how to use them, how they work, get them onto the internet, make sure the world knows about them. So I am very good at this, kids. You'll see. I started when I was a child. So here we are in the NASDAQ and running around inside this channel, once again, staying in a wonderful channel, working its way up, building bull flags, something changes. It holds here again, but it changes when it breaches here because you don't usually breach the channel. You hold the channel. Breach. All right. Well, Omni already told me that was going to happen on the 2nd of April. Well, NASDAQ did breach that channel and is now working its way lower. So we've got reasoning to think there's more downside coming. Not only that, take a look at this NASDAQ chart. This is your weekly NASDAQ chart. Now, every one of these daily bars represents a full week's worth of trading. Very important charts. Look at what's happening here. Let me blow it up for you. It is a very rare occasion that we come out of a channel on a weekly chart in the NASDAQ. Very rare. You don't come out of these channels very often. Fell out of the channel right around the same time we were looking at the S&P giving us the bearish divergences, which we were able to present to you and put out a whole bunch of trades to make sure that we caught that. So you've seen S&P absolutely bearish and we caught it right on the day. No one can do this trades. I promise you that no one's ever been this good with technical analysis. I learned in the right place. No one's seen that coming. I didn't hear anyone on TV. I didn't read it in the papers. I didn't hear anything on the internet. The day we put the high in, in the S&P, that suddenly we'd become a bearish market. The Omni is good at what it does. Let me show you more. Now we are looking at the very interesting chart, the transportation average. The Dow Jones transportation average basically did the same thing. Let's see if there's an average that we have on here. I think we like this average on here. Yes, we do. So check this out. Actually, we could do a better one than that. That's for a different chart. Let's put this average on here. Check this out. Now, the street watches this geometry like hawks. I promise you, they are watching this geometry and they watch the major averages. Look at how, if you don't think they're watching these major averages, look at the bar. Look at what happens when it gets underneath, comes back up to test, breaks, can't get above, breaks. When it does get above, look at the major rallies until you hit it. Rally, hit it. Rally gets under it, little jig -a jag rally. Well, look what happened here. Not only did we break the average that Wall Street's been using, but it also broke down through the trend line. Now, the market showed us the chart, showed us the fundamental on 4-2. The news came out Friday. Friday. <laughs> we knew long before that that something was brewing. Why? Because news always comes out in the charts first. You just got to know how to read these charts. So that's what we're looking at in the Dow Jones the Dow Jones transportation average, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. But if you want to know the truth, well, one of the bigger telegraphers, and I did show this to you, by the way, was this one. Major telegraph. Now, in that video I filmed on the second for the third, this chart is in there. The other charts are in there. Reasoning why we would drop is in there. Everything's in that video. So you can go back to the second of April if you want to and watch that video, which led to this drop. So, once again, wonderful channel, bottom, top, no problem, right? It comes to the bottom, but now, once again, average. See the average where it holds? Gets into a channel. Now it's average channel hold. Back to the top, average channel hold. Up a little, average channel hold. Up a little, average channel hold. Up a little, it does it again. Boom, to the top, working exactly the way we'd expect. That's different. Now we've got a red circle there, no longer green ones. That, my friends, is different. So as soon as that happened, we also put out another video and said, now we expect a much bigger pullback, and the pullback has ensued. Traders, no crystal ball. Nobody told me this was going to happen. Charts will always tell you what's going to happen if you know how to read them. Now, I run a live room 24 hours a day. You can always, always find me in that room. There are zero credit cards required. You need nothing to get in. You create a username. In fact, you go to Live with Oscar, either log in or register. If you register, you'll go create a username, password. It's going to send you an email. 
no credit cards required. That email is going to go to spam, I promise you. <laughs> go to spam, check the email, and join me in my free live trading room. Traders from all over the world are here every day. This is me waving to you right now. It's live, and it'll cost you nothing. You can spend your lives like I do in a live trading room, and I can help you guys in a thousand ways. So you've seen the Dow Jones Daily. You've seen the Dow Jones Transportation. NASDAQ and the E-mini S&P and the Omni identified right at the top that we were going to start to break, put out videos and sent out trade recommendations, which we were all able to score very large, very large amounts of points on. But we're not done. Wait till you see the rest of this. Let's go to another chart. 17. Now let's take a look at another one. Look at the Russ. Once again, absolute unequivocal proof that the news comes out in the charts first before it actually breaks. How do we know that? Well, the power of technical analysis, news comes out in the charts first. If you guys don't know that, keep watching. So what happens? We put in an all-time high. Suddenly, bearish conditions begin, like I pointed out in that video, and I'll point out in this presentation. Days and days and days later, we finally breached the channel. So. We put the all-time highs in, bearish conditions begin, video goes out, sell recommendations go out, we break the channel, news finally happens. We're here, way after it came out in the chart first. Everyone heard about it on Friday, Thursday night or Friday, Israel, whatever you want to call it. It was a technical thing that started to break down. Now, you can give it a news name if you want to call it Israel, call it anything you want. The technicals told us this was coming. It's a technical move as far as I'm concerned. And look, you're below that average too. And you've got channels now pointing in a completely different direction. Now our channels are pointing down, not up, right? We were in this beautiful up channel. Well, not anymore, kids. Now we're in a down channel. And you're below the average. And I've got a red omni for trading on Sunday, not Monday. So as you can see, news absolutely unequivocally does come out in the charts first. Now, what is making all of this happen? Why would this happen when we were running up and we were having such a beautiful market? We ran up and put in new highs. Why does everything become bearish on that day? Well, it didn't quite become bearish on that day. It was becoming bearish. What do I mean by that? Well, look at this. This is a quote board. Every one of these quotes are part of a sector of the entire Wall Street market. This is like a puzzle. When the puzzle pieces start to move away, the rest of the puzzle pieces have to catch up to keep the puzzle going. So what does that mean? Let me show you what that means. Why is Russell, NASDAQ, S&P, and everything else dropping? So let's go take a look here. First of all, traders, you've heard me say this for many, many years. You've heard me get thrown off television for telling the truth about crude oil. <laughs> However, crude oil, and you know what? For now, let's get rid of that average. It means nothing. It shouldn't be there. Crude oil cannot continue to go higher like this without hurting the stock market. Why would that be? Well, crude and other markets. You know, there's all this talk about EV, EV, EV. Yeah, wonderful EV. Great. The problem with that is between five overestimating to 12% of this planet uses EV. You know who else uses gasoline? 90 to 95% of us, <laughs> okay? You cannot have the price of crude going higher. It's an absolute tax on everybody in the world. Absolute, immediate, hits you right in your pocket. Same thing as when crude goes down, it's an immediate stimulus. Stimulus Hits you right in your pocket, helps every company out there, just like that, when gas and crude go down. You've got crude not only just going up first, it started its rallying, it started to build steam. Then it went into acceleration mode. And I am telling you right now, kids, you cannot have, I think I gotta go to a weekly, you cannot have A, crude going higher and even on the weekly. This is a serious problem now. Why? No, because we've been kept in check for years by this resistance, which we've gotten above. That is not going to help the stock market. Why? Well, it's not just that. It's you've got 
crude oil going up, which is absolutely going to be detrimental to the stock market. And you've got this going on too. Take a look at this. Every one of these charts were in that were, I used to explain where we were going on the set. 30 year T bonds. I don't know how, if you know how this works, traders, but the 30 year T bonds, the 10 year notes, the futures market, if the futures market is going down, that means interest rates are going up automatically, inherently. Jerome Powell does not have to touch rates. The Fed does not have to say a word. It is automatic. How, do, how does that work? Well, interest rates and bonds, let's call this a, a teeter-totter or a seesaw out in the playground. You've got interest rates on one side, you've got bonds on the other. Turns out that bonds for the moment is the big fat kid in the, sorry to say, but it's the big heavy kid in the schoolyard. He sat on one side of the seesaw, the other side went up. You know what the other side is? Interest rates. Interest rates have to go up automatically, inherently, when bonds go down. Bonds have been going down all year, all year. And now it's starting to get into more of an acceleration mode. And if you'll see this trend, look at the channel now. You were in a slow down channel. We are now in acceleration mode. And if you wanna look at this right about the middle of this, this was an actual channel itself. Let me show you what's starting to happen here with bonds why inflation is starting to pick up. We had a channel that was sort of here. We got above a little bit, but mostly we stayed underneath in here. Now the channel has gotten wider. The drops are getting bigger. You cannot have a stock market going up with crude going up and bonds going down. You Let me rephrase. You can't have a market going up. It's going to have to reprice first. We are in a repricing right now, not a crash. It's not the beginning of the end. We are in a repricing because the price of crude went up too high and the price of bonds went down too low, which raises interest rates. Why would that matter? Well, if you're a corporation and if interest rates go up, you issue corporate bonds. Those corporate bonds you're going to offer 8% return on, let's say, because if you're, gonna, if you're going to risk your money in a corporate bond instead of a very stable, safe U.S. bond, the corporation has to offer for interest. Well, if the corporation has to offer more interest next month than it's offering this month to sell more bonds, that means it's paying more money for the same money it was paying for just a month ago. That makes stocks come down. They have to. They have to. There is no alternative. You've got to reprice. This is the visual of what I'm telling you. We have to reprice. And that started already. So it's absolute that I was that the charts did tell us exactly what should happen. And I'm giving you some reasoning now why that's happening. There's another piece of this puzzle. Look here. Let's go to this. This is a chart that shows us inflation. Wall Street uses it. The world uses it. It shows us whether we're in inflation or deflation. I actually made a joke about this chart, and I called it the measurement of commodity deflation since COVID. Why? Well, because since COVID, we have just gone straight down in the measurement of inflation. Well, not straight, nothing goes straight down, but you see we've been working our way all the way down. So it's been deflation. It, the inflation index was 140.55 at the height of inflation after COVID. We dropped all the way to I don't know, down here, 93 and change, 94 and change. We went all the way down there. Well, look what's happened recently. We are now at 102. And I'll show you what that means. It's not as small as it looks. Now, you've got something different going on. You've got inflation working in absolutely the wrong direction. It was doing great on its way down. It was helping us. This is bad, 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 bad. Inflation is starting to set in. So now if you've got inflation setting in, the Fed is not going to be able to lower rates. This is all one big picture, kids. The market is seeing that. The market is now coming down the stock market. A lot of this is the reasoning behind it. Now, two fundamentals come out in the charts. First, I have to say yes every single time. I'm going to show you another reason why that would be true. Heard about Tesla earlier today. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Nobody can call Tesla like the Omni. Let me explain this to you. More proof that news comes out in the charts first. Do you want to see it? Okay. 
January, when I did a webinar back in January, I said, traders, Tesla's in trouble. It starts now. I offered my first set of targets. You know what they were? 212, 200, and 192. First targets issued right here. Tesla's trading around 241. We have dropped since to 212. Boom, hit. First target. 200. Boom, hit. Second target. 192. Third target hit. When the third target hit, I issued more targets. Boom. Here's my second set of targets. 173, hit. 164, hit. 151 is next. 151 is down here. We are going to get to that one, I promise you. Now, how do I know that the news comes out in the charts first? Well, watch this little gem. <laughs> January, I did a webinar. I think it was for Traders Quarter. And in that webinar, I said this. Hybrid is the wave of the future. EV has been overdone and has shown to be the incorrect path. This was in Jan of 2024. In January, we recognize EV is done, hybrid's the new thing. The chart showed that to us, okay? That was January. Then I gave out the targets. You want to see what just happened? In April, on April 8th, here's the front page of IBD. The future turns back to hybrids. Isn't that interesting, kids? How did we see it? The charts told us exactly that was going to happen. And four months later, the street sees it. We're already hit five out of six targets. The street is finally noticing. I also gave you an extremely powerful average, and I told you, use this average every time Tesla gets to it, just sell. It got to it again. It hit 173. It got to it again. It hit 164. It just got to it again, or just about a few days ago, 151 comes next. That, my friends, is proof that the fundamentals of the news comes out in those charts first. How did I know to give you those targets in a market? Tesla doing so well. Everybody loves Tesla. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Oscar comes out and goes, no, no, no. Tesla's going to have a big problem because the chart called me to tell you I've got no crystal ball. I read charts really well. And I promise you, charts tell us everything we need to know about the future if you know how to read them well. That is something I teach and will teach to you if you want to join me. I have a four-day session here called OmniCamp. I invite people to Vegas for four days and four nights to my home office where my wife and children live, and I teach them the Omni. If you would like to be part of this, you simply would have to go to OmniBootCamp.com omnibootcamp.com fill out an application it's very simple uh, it's it's you know it's right here at the top in fact everywhere on this you click you can fill out the application it doesn't matter where you're clicking you can just fill it out the next camp is literally in 11 days here in Las Vegas if you're interested in that camp you'd have to contact me right away you'd have to call me you know you, you can find all my information i'm not going to waste the time on it now but you can find me any way you need to find me and maybe i'll try to give you some information right at the end the next camp that we're going to have is let me see if i can find that nope that's not here here oh the next camp we're going to have you might want this one i'm going to do a camp on the road i'm the camp on the go in florida in naples that will happen june 1st through 3rd if you guys want to be part of that or the one here in Las Vegas at the end of this month, just contact me and let me know. But let's continue on. So what else is making a lot of this happen? Well, an interesting thing. I just showed you a chart about inflation, right? Check this out. Now, we do have inflation. Everybody sees it at every store. It's not quite commodity inflation, though, although it's starting to become commodity inflation. But we do have inflation. There's something very interesting that's happening that's helping Americans more than any other citizens on the planet. Imagine this. If we were having this sort of inflation and our currency was going down right now, imagine the inflation and the dollar dropping at the same time. Prices up in the stores going up, your dollar going down. Well, not here in the U.S. We have been blessed. Look at this dollar moving up trying to keep pace with inflation. I'm not saying it is for sure, but imagine being in Europe, imagine being in Japan, imagine holding another currency. While inflation, the price of goods go up, 
and your currency goes down. Well, we've been blessed in the U.S. with a strong dollar. That has been helping. But what it doesn't help are other markets like this one. So I've had Omniacs ask me to do work on the Japanese yen, which I did for them last week. And I showed them on the yen we had some sort of a, let me show you a couple of things here. We had a couple of things going on. First of all, this yen's in some serious trouble. I mean, wow, is that in trouble, right? <laughs> Plus, ugly as it looks, you've actually got some weird head and shoulders sitting right here. So the yen looks terrible. Let me get back to that chart. Sorry about that. The yen looks terrible here. And one of the reasons why, of course, is the U.S. dollar, right? Dollar going up is going to push yen down. But there's something that was brought to my attention about seven to eight days ago. And I said, I will show this to you in a video, which I did do. Now I want to re-present it to you. I showed him. He said, I think it's a good place to buy yen. And I said, no, that does not make sense. And I'll show you why. I've got a technique called knock, 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 knock. What is that? Well, that is this. If a market keeps knocking on a door, eventually it will open. Knock, rally. Knock, rally. Knock. So I said to them, do not buy the yen. In fact, what's going to happen is because when you knock on a door enough times in this business, the door will open. The door opened. Look at that. Exactly as we expected, knock-knock technique works almost every time. Of course, you have to know when to use it, but the dollar is driving these currencies down. What if this was our currency? What if you were in Japan? Why? I mean, could you imagine how bad inflation would be there? We have been blessed with that U.S. dollar. Another market that I was uh, asked to cover, by the way, was Bitcoin. Oscar, what do you think about Bitcoin? Well, I've been showing you this chart for quite some time in Bitcoin, how it's been working and giving fantastic signals based on this average. So way back here, we noticed the bull flag brewing, got above the average. I offered a buy signal in Bitcoin and it exploded, went into another bull flag, held the average. We offered another signal. It exploded. It held the average. We offered another signal. It exploded. Then we went to the sidelines. Since then, we basically have been on the sidelines and we are still on the sidelines now, but Bitcoin and Ethereum run together. And you see this average that makes, it really makes a big difference in whether or not Bitcoin traders are buying or selling Bitcoin, but that's not really what's leading right now. Believe it or not, someone else is taking this lead, Ethereum. Ethereum is actually taking the lead right now. Look at this average how well it holds. In fact, if we go back further, it holds and holds. I mean, it just works and works and works. Look at the severe break under that average as of Friday. Bitcoin didn't show it yet. It's only a little bit under the average, but Ethereum absolutely showed it to us. So careful in your Bitcoin and Ethereum for now, we are not looking at buy signals. And how goes the stock market? Basically is how goes Bitcoin and Ethereum anyway. That's what's been happening lately. So you might as well keep that in mind. What else do we have? Oh, yes. A lot of traders asked me about this one. Oscar, what about gold? Well, I have basically told traders to stay long gold, get long gold, let's buy gold. It's about to go into parabolic stages. And boom, it did, which brought us a short-term capitulation. If you want to know, know what to do with gold right now, stay away for a couple of days. I think this, I don't think. This is usually the sign of a short-term capitulation. It doesn't mean the end of the market, but it is a short-term capitulation type of move. So I would be careful. I'd wait a few days in gold to see if it capitulated because it's not just gold that did that. Look at silver. Silver likely did the same thing. Short-term capitulation just took place there. See that? That major bar up comes down, settles about at the lows. When you get one of those, a lot of times you've got capitulation. So you need to be careful here. As bullish as it looks, it might need a little bit of a pullback in silver and gold because of that major run on Friday and then the reversal to the bottom, capitulation looking move. I would, would advise you to stay out of gold for a couple of days and let it resolve itself. Another thing that I was able to 
show in my last webinar was geometry. In fact, I'm going to show you something fantastic. Let me see if this helps you. Watch this. Um, in the webinar in January, I we were, we were here. Now, get this. You must understand that nothing passed. Let's fill this so I can at least make it make sense. Nothing passed this. Yeah, whatever. I can't fill it. I'm not going to worry about it. Nothing past this exists yet. Nothing, nothing, nothing. This didn't happen. We came down, right? So let's just do it this way. We came down in Chipotle and we hit here. And I was doing a geometry lesson. What I was saying is geometry is what Wall Street follows. I mean, explicitly, they follow it implicitly. You'll see. So I mentioned that we are right here in Chipotle now due to the geometry I taught you on the webinar in January, it says Chipotle goes to 3,000. That was here. You can go back and look at the webinar. <laughs> Chipotle hit 3,000, right? <laughs> I mean, is that not incredible analysis? Is that not incredible? It hit 3,000. Please like, share, and subscribe when you find me on YouTube because it'll help you. I put out a video every night to tell people what should happen the next day. But look at, at, at how well the geometry worked for that call in CMG. Now I'm gonna show you a little more about geometry, which I think you're gonna love. All right, this should show you that it is absolutely the truth that geometry is what rules these markets. Now, what I've shown you today is my technical analysis 101. I kid you not, I can do this laying, laying on, a, on a cot drinking warm milk and eating cookies in kindergarten, right? It's really simple for me, but it's powerful and I think it will help you. So that's why I kept this webinar so simple, but watch this. Do you wanna see the true power of geometry and that this chart is a true testament to the power of the geometry that Wall Street uses in technical analysis? Watch this. Imagine if you knew to get short right here. How would you know that? How would anybody know that? Well. Let's also imagine that we have a high. Let me grab a little tool here. I'm just grab a little tool and mess around with. We've got a high set here. Comes down, sets another high. Nothing past this happened yet. This didn't exist. We don't know anything about this. Here's the last of our chart. Now watch this, kids. Imagine having this information before it gets there. Imagine if you knew this before it got there. You see this trend line? Watch this. In fact, I am going to make it a prettier look. Let's give it a prettier color. You guys need to see this. This is great. Uh, that should do it. It should be a little brighter. Check this out. Boom! Right to the dead high. How the hell did Wall Street know to get short right there? How did they know that was going to happen? Nothing existed past this. You had a high here, another high. Nothing existed. How did Wall Street know? That's not all. Watch this. Now, let's pretend that this chart goes from here, came down, jigger jagged, and stopped right there. That's the last high we have. None of this happened yet. Watch this. How do they know? Bingo, sell it there. You would have been right on the money. Bingo, sell it there. You were right on the money. Bingo, sell it there. You were right on the money. How do they know? Because they follow geometry. This is simple stuff. Watch this. You haven't seen it all yet. Look at this one. Boom, right there. A perfect spot to have gone long. How do they know? Oh, because I grew up on Wall Street. I know all these tricks. I can help you in a thousand ways. You just need to trust me and come to liveofhonesty.com and hang out with me. I promise you, it'll cost you nothing to be there. You hang out in my live trading room. It fills with people during the week. And I sit and I show charts and I give out trades and we spend our lives together. If you would like to spend your life with me in a live trading room, looking over my shoulder and me sharing my tips, tricks, techniques, and I offer trading recommendations, just come to livewithoscar.com and join me. There is also this. Everybody listening today, I will give you a one month trial to my trading recommendations, which is separate from everything else. I didn't even show you any of that. I have traders all over the world. I send out recommendations to, we trade together. When we get in, we get in. When we get out, we get out. If you would like to be part of that service, I will give those to you for a month. 
to see the magic that Omni produces. With that, I'm going to yield back to you, my friend. Thank you so much for this webinar and the time. And everybody watching, thank you for paying attention. I hope I was able to help you in some way today.